Last night, a candlelight vigil was held at the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial in Washington, D.C., to commemorate the 54th anniversary of Reverend King's assassination. Among the many people at last night's ceremony was Ukrainian ambassador to the United States, Oksana Markarova. The ambassador said she was touched by the solidarity with Ukraine as we fight for the same values and freedom. Joining us now, civil rights leaders Martin Luther King III and Andrea King. Andrea, tell us about the event and also the symbolism of having the Ukrainian ambassador attending. Well, good morning. Uh, we, we really felt that as the nation and the world observed the 54th um, anniversary since the day that Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, it was very important to really take a moment to reflect on where we are as a world and nation and to really remember that Martin Luther King Jr. talked about the eradication of the triple evils of poverty, of racism and war and that he stood for peace, justice, and equity. And so we felt it was very important to have a moment um, to, to reflect on that and to stand with the Ukrainian people, with the Ukrainian ambassador, and call for peace, to remember that he was taken from us um, in, in um, violence, and to bring back the, the notion of peace and to talk about nonviolence in this world. Martin Luther King III, and Andrea, uh, said it was important to take a look at where we are in this fight. Where are we? You know, sometimes it, when it, it looks very dark, which it does at this particular moment, uh, and Andrea often says this, we look to the stars at the darkest moment. Mm -hmm. And when we look at what's happening domestically with violence increasing, when we look at what's happening really all over the world and, and the many wars that exist, but certainly Ukraine being the most important because it could pro propel us into a World War III that no one wants to see. But the fact of the matter is we also know that none of us will ever give up. None of us will give in. We can't give out. Uh, we have always endured as a nation and as a world community. And at some point, uh, humankind, Dad would say, must learn nonviolence or we might face nonexistence. Uh, I I want to believe that we are a much better uh, humanity than we, than we are seeing right now. We are seeing the inhumanity which is happening in the Ukraine. Uh, people, I mean, Russians bombing hospitals with children and places where people are supposed to be safe. It's really unconscionable that we would see this behavior uh, at, at this particular time. We as a, a global society should be much further ahead. And we have to continue to work to set that tone. And and so although it looks extraordinarily difficult, I still remain hopeful. Mm. Andrea, good morning. It's good to see you. We were talking yesterday on the anniversary of Dr. King's assassination with Reverend Sharpton uh, about this moment in the Supreme Court where it looks now with the support of three Republicans like Judge Katanji Brown Jackson will become the first black woman ever to serve on the Supreme Court. And I'm curious what you think that means for the continuation of Dr. King's dream. Well, I think first and foremost, it was um, extraordinary um, that 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 happened yesterday. So I think um, in some d divine way, it was um, a, a way, a sign for us to, to keep going, to acknowledge the fact of how far we have to go, but how far we've come. And mm -hmm. certainly as a black woman, as a black mother, I, I cannot think of anyone that's more qualified to, to sit on the Supreme Court. But more, moreover, I think about all of the black women that are sitting in places where, you know, under a tremendous amount of stress and strain, they're continuing forward with grace, um, with dignity, with power, and that they are actually being seen. We're certainly not being seen enough, and all too often we're still um, um, being diminished or the, the magic and little black girls are being ignored. But yesterday certainly was a, a sign, um, and particularly to um, girls, little girls and black girls, about the power of um, and intelligence and diligence and grace and strength of black women. Mr. King, your father's signature uh, it ranks among very few in terms of lasting prominence, memory, and significance. Only a handful of Americans carry that significance. Your name, Martin Luther King III, 
I'm going to assume has been both a blessing and a burden somewhat to you. What's it been like to carry that name, to carry that legacy, and keep moving it forward as you have done? Well, it is an extraordinary honor. I'm, I'm thankful, though, that my mother prepared me uh, when I was a young, uh, a young man, or actually a young boy, by saying, you don't have to go to Morehouse College like your father did. You don't have to become a civil rights leader. You don't have to become a minister. Be your best self, whatever that is, and we will support you. So that kind of liberated me, because if I woke up every day trying to fulfill the shoes of Martin Luther King Jr., I would fail miserably. I'm not sure Martin Luther King Jr., based on the iconic uh, scenario that exists, could fulfill his shoes uh, at, at this time. But the, the fact of the matter is, it is an extraordinary honor and a blessing. And I always look at it that way as opposed to the burdens. There's Everyone has burdens, quite frankly. And so it's I, I want to always be positive and thankful and grateful. And I also believe that to him or her that much is given, of him or her is much required. Martin Luther King III and Andrea King, thank you both very much for being on this morning. And Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.